Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be taking a look at an article written by Kevin Patra over at Around the NFL that talks about the unsung heroes of the 2023 NFL season. One overlooked slash surprise contributor from one each, or I guess I should say from each NFC team. And of course, we're going to be looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and who their unsung hero was this season past season so let's go ahead and dive right into it i'm not going to show you guys every single guy here on this list if you do want to go read the entirety of the article go check it out go give kevin patra some support but for the tampa bay buccaneers kevin patra had selected vita vea and this is a very very interesting but but justifiable pick in my opinion you take a look vita vea could be the poster boy for underappreciated players he controls the line of scrimmage like a few others, led defensive linemen this year with 35 stops and finished third on the team with quarterback pressures to go along with five and a half sacks. Tampa used him on the outside at times this season to create mismatches on tackles. I want to talk about that in a moment. Big run stopper, finished fourth in the NFL in yards per carry allowed, 3.8. When it's time to cast ballots for popularity contests, Vita Vea's name might not come up, but you can sure be, but you can be sure offensive linemen feel his presence every game. I agree with all of that 100%. I'm very happy that Kevin Patra recognizes what Vita Vea did for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this past season. And again, this is a season in 2023. It was Vita Vea, 28 years old, so he's getting a bit up there. He is a very well tenured veteran in the league at this point. Vita Vea, this you could argue is one of his better seasons in the entirety of his career. You take a look at sacks, it was the second most with five and a half on the year. Now, Kevin Patra had already talked about that. You take a look at combined tackles this year, it was the best of his career. Solo tackles, the best of his career. Assists, tied for second best of his career. Tackles for loss, best of his career. Quarterback hits, fourth best of his career. But Overall, it was still an incredibly valuable, incredibly good season for Vita Vea. Forced fumbles the most of his career this year. He didn't have any pass deflections like he did in 2019 or in 2021, but it is what it is. This is also the third most games Vita Vea has played in an entire season, which I feel like is pretty notable. It seems like he is getting healthier the past couple of years, and I'm always going to give props and credit to that. He also had half a sack in the playoffs. He had two quarterback hits and three total tackles in two playoff games. And look, Vita Vey is just a good dude. He's just a really, really important piece to this team. It uh, reminds me, of course, I know it's a big, another big, deep nose tackle Polynesian guy, but uh, Haloni Nada and Vita Vea are kindred spirits, I believe. And Haloni Nada had a very long, very successful career in the NFL that I think was overlooked. Vince Wilfork was another guy. Now, thankfully, Vince Wilfork did eventually get his recognition and is you know, essentially looked back on fondly nowadays after his NFL career, but Vita Vea is in the same exact trajectory as those guys. He is an absolute a wrecking ball of a human being. I was going to say a bowling ball, but that's too small for Vita Vea. Again, he was third on the team in tackles. He was well down there in terms of combined tackles, but in terms of anybody that was on the defensive line or an outside linebacker, he was third, which I feel like is, is certainly a good thing. Fourth in tackles for loss. That's always going to be great. Tied for second in quarterback hits on the year with Kalaja Kansi. You take a look at forced fumbles. He was third on the team with Antoine Winfield Jr. and Shaq Barrett being the only two ahead of him. And you had Kevin Patra talk about how Vita Vey has been used on the outside at defensive end to go up against defensive tackles. I think that's a great strategy from Todd Bowles. I mean, Vita Vey is 6'4", 347. This is a guy that is such a huge piece in Todd Bull's defense that I don't think gets talked about enough. He helped stop the quarterback sneak, the tush push, as people call it, the brotherly shove, whatever you want to call it from the Philadelphia Eagles. That was a big momentum play in that wild card game, and Vita Vea helped shut that play down along with KJ Britt. But Vita Vea was a big driving force, you know, for that play and really just has been for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for. Years and years and years. I mean, there's a reason the Bucks have always had a top rushing defense ever since Vita Vea came to this team, y'all, is because he's just that good. He just contributes that well. I mean, let, let's let's take a look at it. Going back to 2018, it was Vita Vea's first year 
in the league. You take a look at rushing defense. Okay, it wasn't as good. It was his rookie year, 24th and 29th in terms of rushing defense. In terms of 2019, you take a look. They had the number one rushing defense in terms of yards allowed on the year. What about 2020? This was the year the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. They had the number one rushing defense in absolutely everything. What about 2021? Yet another year where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had success. Yet another year where they're where they are basically in the top three in terms of rushing defense. 2022, Todd Bowles' first year. Things did take a bit of a dip, 15 in yards, but it's still a top half rushing defense in this league. And then in 2023, things dipped back up into the top five yet again for rushing defense. So every time Vita Vea has been around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and has played prominent amounts of snaps, the Buccaneers have had a large amount of success most years in terms of their rushing defense. But I think what is so important here is that Vita Vea has also developed pass rushing ability as well. You see the first three years of his career, three sacks, two and a half sacks, two sacks with a combined 19 quarterback hits. The past three years... For Vita Vea, 16 sacks, 34 quarterback hits. That's great. He made a Pro Bowl in 2021, won the Super Bowl in 2022, or sorry, 2020. My apologies. I wish they won in 2022. That would have been very nice. But now, later in his career, you're starting to see Todd Bowles use Vita Vea in more creative ways as a pass rusher, and Vita Vea has developed that part of his game, which is awesome. Everybody knew that he was already a fantastic a guy in terms of, of run defense and whatnot. Also, part of this is because of the fact that Vita Vea has played significantly more games in the past three years than he did. He, he played and started 45 games since 2021 to 2023. His first three years in the league, he played in 34, started 29. So, I mean, everything that you're seeing here is good, right? Vita Vea is getting healthier. This is the healthiest three years he's had of his entire career. And we're seeing results, not just as a run stopper and, and being able to contribute to a rushing defense, but even as a pass rusher. And guess what, guys? Vita Vea, when he gets double teamed, that opens up opportunities. That contributes to success for guys like Shaq Barrett or Antoine Winfield Jr. especially, or Yaya Diaby getting seven and a half sacks this year, or Kalaja Kansi leading the way with 12 quarterback hits. Vita Vea has a hand in all of that. I mean, he's quite literally the anchor of this defense. I think that he is the third most important player on this defense besides... Levante David and Antoine Winfield Jr., but he's right up there in terms of importance. You notice a shift in this defense whenever Vita Vea is not there. So for him to, and I, and I think Bucks fans are just accustomed to Vita Vea being there, and, and I don't think always fully appreciate the greatness of Vita Vea. The national people, you can forget about it. Look, 70% of NFL fans probably don't even know who Vita Vea is, right? Because he's just a quiet more humble type of guy, but when he needs to go out there and make plays, he's going to go out there and make plays. I also want to talk about his advanced stats because, again, we, we, we had talked about quarterback pressures and whatnot. I don't necessarily know where he finished third on the team with, with 35 stops and 29 quarterback pressures, according to Pro Football Reference. He had 13, so maybe this is uh, if you're accounting for the past two years, but... Again, you take a look there, 15, 16, 13. He's getting pressure. He's knocking down the quarterback. He's hurrying the quarterback as well. He's never been, he doesn't need to be blitzed because he's always playing. It's just a good thing. It's a good thing for Vita Vea. If he stays healthy, he continues to be a guy that just will hopefully have a ton of longevity for the Bucks. Hopefully, like a Vince Wilfork. Again, I I, I want to see okay, I want to see if I can compare him to Vince Wilfork at this point in their careers. Give me one moment. I want to see if I'm going to be able to do that. Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at Vince Wilfork. Vince Wilfork did play 12 years in the league. Let's compare their careers so far up to this point. I think that that's a, a fun thing to do. I think that that is a, an enjoyable thing to do. So you take a look. Vince Wilfork, two championships, five Pro Bowls, four All-Pros. Vita Vea already has more sacks than Vince Wilfork, by the way. So he, he's already showcased more ability, more ability than what than what Wilfork was able to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can choose the seasons here. So this is Vita Vea's sixth season. Let's go to Vince Wilfork's sixth season and see if we can get results and then go from there. Yeah, you take a look. Vince Wilfork played in more games, so let's let's take it down a step. Let's say five seasons to get there. 
and we hit get results. Give me a minute. We're going to get there. There we go. Much more comparable. Take a look. 79 games for Vita Vea, 77 for Vince Wilfork. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can take a deeper look at this. And he's pretty much right on pace, pros, uh, right on pace folks. One championship each, one Pro Bowl each, one All-Pro for Vince Wilfork. Now, Wilfork did have five fumbles recovered, but Vita Vea has three more forced fumbles. Solo tackles, you do give that to Big Vince. Vita crushed it in terms of sacks, but point being is that these two guys have very, very comparable careers. That That is just the the absolute facts of it, folks. Let's go to um, see if we can get Haloti Nada in there, see if we can get him in that mix and, and see what's going on there. So he his sixth season, see if we can can see what's going on with Haloti Nada. Okay, he played in 94 games. I'm going to change the, the overall criteria just so we can uh, have it be fair and everything above board and, and get fair results in terms of the game averages and whatnot. There you go. Take a look. 79, 77, 78. Uh, you know, Vita Vea has the most sacks out of the three. Vince Wilfork and Haloti Nada do crush Vita Vea in terms of solo tackles, but forced fumbles. You give that to Vita Vea. Fumbles recovered. Vita Vea and Haloti Nada are tied. Haloti Nada somehow had three interceptions. I think that that's absolutely wild. And Haloti Nada did have them on Pro Bowls and All Pros, but Vita had them on championships. But just saying, like, these are the two comparisons, right? And I think that Vita Vea is on a similar pace to a Vince Wilfork and a Haloti Nada in terms of how many games he has played in his career so far. He's a better pass rusher than both these guys by far. In terms of solo tackles and forcing fumbles... Uh, he is right up there as well. Not so much for solo tackles, but for the other stats, yes. And similar value to Vince Wilfork. Obviously, those interceptions are going to skyrocket Haloti Nada's value, but you get what I'm saying. Haloti Nada and, or Vince Wilfork and Haloti Nada had fantastic careers in this league. I think Vince Wilfork is being considered for a Hall of Fame uh, thing now. He And he had 13 years in his career. Haloti Nada had... 13 years in his career as well. If Vita Vea stays on the same track, we're going to be having a lot more of Vita Vea for many, many years to come, hopefully. He is currently at, hold on one second, one, two, three, four, five, six years of his career. So, fingers crossed we get seven more years of Vita Vea. We'll have to wait and see, but just wanted to give a quick comparison, talk about why Vita Vea is an unsung guy compared to what some of these other guys that do get talked about. He's an absolute beast of a human being. One of the anchors, if not the top three best players on the Buccaneers team, or, or sorry, defense. I, I would even say top five player on the team. I'm not scared to say that. I really do believe that. So going to give credit here to Vita Vea. He's absolutely elite. But what do you guys think about this? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, guys, I'll see you all in your next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.